that Muhammad peace be upon him who was sent as a mercy would condone that behavior so think before you speak am I an ambassador of my faith remember my brothers and sisters we thank Allah we are Muslimin mashallah I'm talking to a crowd perhaps majority Muslim and we welcome those of our brothers and sisters who are not Muslim too I'm sure you will take a lot from today may Allah grant us goodness but my brothers and sisters think every time you do things am I doing this the way that if the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was here he would be proud of it bearing in mind the beautiful qualities he had I always tell brothers and sisters carry yourself in a very respectful way such that you beam the correct teachings of the faith that was brought to you by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam given by Allah when you dress dress in a way that if the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him had to see you you would not have to run away Wow did you hear that and this does not apply only to the females we have a problem people like to say the women are not dressed appropriately I like to say well the men also need help how many of our young brothers unfortunately show their backsides as they walk and they're fine with it and they think when they see a woman look at this lady she's not dressed properly brother lift your trousers up to start with it's a reality lift your trouser up to start with we look at others without realizing the three fingers point at us so the matter of dress is for both women and men when you dress people say I'm free to dress how I want we say yes but your choice comes at a price that price you will pay it in your own life you choose to dress in a way yes it's your choice secularly it's your choice indeed but we are asking you to dress respectfully in a way that you would not be embarrassed if the messenger had to come here today subhanallah imagine if we had to be in the company of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and we say as Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we say we want the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We want it. On the day of judgment, he will be interceding on behalf of people. So we say, Oh Allah, give us that intercession. Imagine, we want the intercession of a person whom, if he was in front of us, we would be embarrassed. Surely that is encouragement enough to say we can improve our dress code, inshallah, both male and female. We can improve our dress code for the sake of Allah. You will find the calmness. You will find the goodness. So when we talk about these things, when we talk about following the religion exactly as it is, when we say respecting differences, we are not talking about giving up your opinions, giving up your faith in order to appease everybody else. I have a beard. My name is Ismail. I didn't just make it ishi for short. I didn't just shave my beard because people stop me at the airport and say, sorry, can I have a peep? Look at your passport. Look again. Look, look. Okay. Sit there for 10 minutes. We want to confirm something. It's okay. I'm a Muslim. I expect that to happen. Mashallah, here in the Gambia, that did not happen. I don't even know what happened. I just was received by a vehicle right at the door of the plane and I was gone. Mashallah. Mashallah. And I want to thank your government, your leadership. And I really have to express my gratitude to every one of you. My excitement is just like yours. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. And that's why I'm standing. I don't even know how long I've spoken for. And that becomes irrelevant because I was told at 10 o'clock this morning, there are people already at the stadium. Do you know what I said? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi. Raji'oon. Wow. 10 in the morning. And they're already there. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Subhanallah. And the heat. And I was following what was going on. 
through the live streaming. And I saw some of our sisters struggling with the heat. And I say, Oh Allah, grant them Jannah. And those medical helpers who are here from the Red Crescent and the Red Cross, may Allah give you Jannah. May Allah grant you goodness. And all those who have been involved with security and with so much more, I really pray that Allah give us Jannah. And that brings me to my next point. What is Jannah? What is Jannah? Jannah is paradise. Paradise, the eternal life of goodness and bliss, where you have what you want. Allah says, In it, whatever your soul desires, you shall have. In it, anything that is sweet to the eye shall be yours. Subhanallah. You see something, you like it, guess what? It's yours. But in this world, that's not the case. So that is paradise. How big is paradise? Have you ever thought of it? It's a very important question because I'm about to make a point that is very strong. Have you ever asked yourself, how big is paradise? Allah always says, The garden, the width of which is greater than the earth and the skies. Subhanallah. Imagine how massive it is. But today what happens? In the Ummah, from among the Muslims, we don't know how to deal with our differences. This man says that is a kafir. That one says he is a kafir. That one says he is a disbeliever. That one says he is a disbeliever. And everyone calls each other disbelievers. And this one says this. And that one says this one's not going to Jannah. That one says this one is not going to Jannah. The other three say those two are not going to Jannah. And so on. So who is going to Jannah? If it is in our hands, Jannah would be empty. No one there. Why? Just me. I was the only Muslim. That's it. Ajib. Strange. You think Jannah is only for you. Subhanallah. You will be surprised. May Allah give us Jannah. When we get to Jannah, we will see all sorts of people in Jannah. MashaAllah. All sorts. People we differed with. People we disagreed with. Jannah belongs to Allah. He is Rahmanun, Rahimun, Wadudun, Ghafurun, Ghaffarun. The most merciful, the most beneficent, the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most loving. Allah, those are His names. Have you thought of the Quran? When you open it, you read the words. The first words, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah. The most beneficent, the most merciful. Rahman, Rahim, they depict the mercy of Allah. That's why Allah says to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Irhamu man fil ardu, yarhamkum man fil sama. You want the mercy of the one in the heavens. The way to get it is by having mercy upon those on earth. Have mercy on those on earth. No need to fight and kill, argue and abuse and be violent and cause hurt. Use vulgar terms. No. Be merciful. Allah will give you mercy. Irhamu man fil ard. Irhamukum man fil sama. If you have mercy upon those on earth, the one in the heavens will have mercy on you. In another narration, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, La yarhamillahum la yarhamin nas. Allah will not have mercy on those who don't have mercy on other people. On who? On other people. Allah didn't say Hamil Muslimin. Allah didn't say Allah will not have mercy upon those who don't have mercy on other Muslims. No, He said on others, on other human beings. So you want the mercy of Allah? Be merciful. Be merciful upon all. Have hope. Continue calling towards goodness. And I promise you, the most powerful way to call people towards goodness is through your character and your conduct. How many people call to Islam, but their character is not up to scratch. So people don't want to listen. People go away. They are harsh. Allah says in the Quran to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allah 
ولو كنت فظا غليظ القلب لانفضوا من حولك It is because of the mercy of Allah that you are lenient and compassionate towards them It is because of the mercy of Allah that you have leniency and compassion So if you want to know if Allah has had mercy on you ask yourself how lenient am I how compassionate am I subhanallah If you are compassionate and lenient it is a sign of the mercy of Allah upon you when you lack leniency and compassion it is a sign that you are distant from the mercy of Allah Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds to that verse and Allah says if you were harsh and hard hearted they would disperse from around you they wouldn't be around you so don't be harsh don't be hard hearted because then no one wants to talk to you you know i receive emails on a daily basis from so many people do you want to know what is the biggest problem we are facing today the biggest problem we are facing today in terms of our social circles divorce marital relations people marry one week later divorced i know of a case a few weeks ago of a couple who got married as they were walking out of the party there was an argument of which car to go into and that resulted in the divorce which car to go to when they asked me i said they should have gone walking it's more romantic subhanallah go walking no problem May Allah forgive us. Imagine fighting over small things for what? Don't fight. Clean your heart. My brothers and sisters, without cleaning the heart, you will never be able to respect differences. Never. You clean the heart and Allah will help you. Because the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, "Allah wa inna fil jasad la mudgha. Idha salahat salah al jasad kulluh wa idha fasadat fasad al jasad kulluhu. Allah wa hiya al qalbu." Behold, in the body there is a piece of flesh an organ if it is pure and good the whole body will be pure and good and if it is diseased and dirty if it is sick diseased then the whole body will be diseased and dirty then he says that organ is the heart it's the heart so clean your heart may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to clean our hearts The mercy that we have upon those we disagree with should be such that when they see us already the disagreement is minimized. You know when you have someone who hates Islam. There are so many Islamophobes out there who don't like Islam because they hear from the media about things that are happening. We are perhaps 2 billion on this globe. If 1000, 2000, 20000 did something bad, it doesn't mean the rest of the billions are bad people. No. But sometimes the way the media portray it portrays it it makes it look like that. Subhanallah. So if you take a look at the compassion that we are supposed to be having when we carry ourselves in the correct way we would definitely be able to resolve the matter without good character and conduct. people will then believe what is being peddled by the media imagine if your character and conduct is so abrupt so wrong and the people who don't like islam see you and i as people and they look at us and think you know what these people are so arrogant they don't even smile they don't even greet they don't even acknowledge they are so harsh in the way they talk they don't say thank you they don't say please they don't greet good morning good afternoon etc etc what happens they start thinking to themselves you know what <clears throat> yes it's a bad religion but the prophet muhammad peace be upon him has asked us to be humble to be humble if you are not humble you won't achieve the more humble you are the happier you will be the more content you will be no matter who you are no matter how powerful you are no matter what wealth you have no matter how good looking you might be no matter how popular you are all that is irrelevant when you get into your grave what will help you your good character your piety your closeness to allah when the prophet muhammad peace be upon him was asked a question the question was o oh messenger peace be upon him 
The people of paradise. What are the qualities that would have earned them paradise? He said two things. Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. The consciousness of Allah. That's why on Friday here, I stressed the issue of salah, prayer. How can I call myself a Muslim and I don't pray five times a day? Today, subhanallah, who am I? Okay, I'm about to say something very interesting. Please excuse me. Who am I? Can I tell you who I am? Zero. Nothing. I have no value. Not at all. Compared to others. Nothing. The value belongs to Allah. Imagine if you were so excited to see a man who has no value. I don't control heaven and hell. I don't control your goodness or sadness or happiness. I don't control what's going to happen to you in your grave. I don't control whether you're going to go to Jannah or not. Not at all. That is all solely and only in the control of Allah. Yet you were so excited to see me. Who am I? Nothing. Will you not be more excited to see Allah five times a day? Will you not be more excited to see Allah to communicate with your maker for Salatul Fajr? Just like you came here five hours earlier. Can you not go to the masjid five minutes earlier? It's a reality I have to say. I have to get it off my chest because I am nothing compared to what we need to do with Allah. There is no comparison. Who am I? If you truly want to sacrifice, even if you did not come here today, but you got up for Salatul Fajr, you are a champion. You are a winner. But if you came here and sat for five hours and did not read Salah, you have lost. You lost everything. May Allah forgive us. Like I told you, please apologize. I apologize to you. I'm sorry. But this is the reality that needs to be uttered. Say the truth, even if it is bitter. You miss Salatul Maghrib that is coming shortly. Wallahi, you've lost everything. If someone were to ask you who is more important, Allah or this Sheikh that came from Zimbabwe, that question itself is an insult because there is no comparison. You cannot bring those two in one sentence. Never. May Allah grant us steadfastness. So when I'm asking you to develop, I'm asking you to develop for the sake of Allah. I'm asking you to respect each other for the sake of Allah. I'm not inviting you towards me. No, not at all. I'm asking you for the sake of Allah. Help yourself by getting closer to the one who made you so that the day you die and go into your grave, you would have succeeded. You will be the happiest person. You will get that Jannah that we spoke about earlier. Jannah, Ardu has samawatu al ard, the width of which is greater than the heavens and the earth. That is just your paradise. In one narration, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, explains the last person who's going to enter paradise. And it's a lovely hadith. In it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks this person, He says, What would you like to have? If we were to give you the whole world and whatever is in it, all for yourself alone, one person, one person, all the worlds, the heavens and the earth, whatever was in on the earth. And the person says, yes, that would be fine. Allah says, you have that multiplied, multiplied again and again, 10 times all for yourself. That's the last person to enter Jannah, subhanallah. Imagine those in the ghettos and the slums. Imagine those street kids who don't have a home. If they read their salah, they are better than those in the castles. If they are serious about their connection with Allah, they are better than those in the palaces. Why? Because they will have the eternal palace. Here on earth, how long are you going to live for? Most of us don't have more than 40, 50 years remaining of our lives if we are lucky. After that, we will die for longer than we were alive. Definitely. There are people who died 500 years ago, but on earth they only lived for 50 years. Subhanallah. So those who prepared for the hereafter are the successful ones truly. 
That doesn't mean that we divorce ourselves from this world. We also like to have good things. We want food, we want clothing, we want so many other things. We want nice things as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that on condition that you respect people. You respect everyone. You know, we deal with the non-Muslims. We deal with those we differ with in faith. When we want to buy things, when we want to sell things, when we want to buy food, when we, for example, would like to buy a car or something else, if it is a non-Muslim on the other side or they are buying from us, so what? We buy and we sell. For what reason? Because I need to live on earth. That's why. I need to make ends meet. I need to eat food. The man selling it to me was a non-Muslim. I want to ask you a question. What is more important? Your worldly life, your deen or your dunya? Your materialistic life or your religion? Your religion is far more important. If you can tolerate someone or respect someone or acknowledge someone because of a need that you have for your dunya, don't you think it's more important to respect them for purposes of your deen? I hope you've understood that. If I buy a bottle of water from someone who's not a Muslim, what happened? I drank the water. I was a happy person. Mashallah. I might say thank you if I'm polite, walk away. Or if they buy from me, I'm happy. They gave me some business. I'm happy. Wallahi, I have a product more important than water. What is it? My deed. It's a product. I need to market it. I need to sell it. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Subhanallah. You know what he says? Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrul laka min humurin naam. I swear by Allah, if Allah uses you to guide one person, it's better for you than the red camel, which was the best of the conveyance at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Imagine. So what is it? It's a product. When you talk to people, be polite, especially the non-Muslims. Why? Because if they were to be guided through your character, your interaction, it is better for you than anything this world can give you in terms of material items better so be good be kind and if that's the case what about the muslims amongst each other do we love each other do we care for each other you won't enter jannah until you believe and you are not true believers until you love one another that's what the prophet peace be upon him says I sincerely ask you today, do you really love one another? Do we really love one another as Muslims? We say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Powerful statement, right? Powerful. There is none worthy of worship besides my Maker, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the Messenger of Allah. The final messenger of Allah. My maker is Allah. Powerful statement. Once we say that, we have already entered into a certain family. We love each other. We care for each other. We will differ thereafter in so many other matters. But don't forget, you have the one common flag that you fall under. Shaitan makes us fight each other. Yet we fall under the flag. We fall under that statement. We fall under the beautiful words. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. We fall under it, but we forget that we fall under it. So we start fighting, arguing, hating. Like I said earlier, when you have differences, present your opinion, present the evidence of it, and convince the others about what you are saying. They will be convinced if Allah wills because the hearts are in the hands of Allah. The hearts are between the fingers of Allah in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He turns them as he wishes. You try and Allah will grant you guidance and Allah will grant the others guidance as well. And if Allah chooses not to give them guidance, worry about yourself. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dalla idha ihtadaytum O you who believe, be concerned about yourselves primarily. 
Because those who are astray will not harm you if you are rightly guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to develop ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in every way. So I call on you, my brothers and sisters, to respect each other, to greet each other. Greeting is something so important. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Should I not show you something if you were to do it? It would increase the love between you. Spread the salam among you. The greeting. And not just the greeting, the peace, the goodness. When you say assalamu alaikum, it means I pray to Allah that He bless you with peace. That's what it means. Peace be upon you. That's why my brothers and sisters here in the Gambia, when you greet someone, greet from your heart, not just from your tongue. Greet from your heart, Assalamu Alaikum. You should break into a small smile because you are saying, May peace be upon you. When you want to say peace, you know when people are taking a photo, they say, Say cheese. Why cheese? For what? Why cheese? I'd rather say peace. MashaAllah. Say peace. Alhamdulillah. Then you can snap with your teeth. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace. But unfortunately, people today say, Salih. Have you heard them greeting you? Salih. What is Salih? They say, no, I mean Assalamu Alaikum. So say it properly. It's a blessed prayer for me. Say Assalamu Alaikum. And the Quran says, وَإِذَا حُيِّيْتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةِ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا When you are greeted with a greeting, respond with a better one. Assalamu Alaikum. Someone says, may peace be on you. You reply, Wa alaykum salamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And to you be the peace of Allah and His mercy and His blessings. Wow. Do you really think we have time to hate on each other after we have said Assalamu alaykum and wa alaykum salam in this way? Do you really think we are going to punch each other and hurt each other and create problems just because we are different in a few things? The answer is no. Be genuine. Understand, subhanallah, that Allah has created the heart and He wants you to make an effort to purify it by His help. So this is what the Prophet, peace be upon him, says. You are not considered true believers until you love one another. And if you want the love to increase between yourselves, you must spread the greeting. Many of us don't greet. Wallahi, we don't greet. We don't even greet our own folks, our friends. Assalamu alaikum, please my brothers and sisters, I encourage you strongly to greet each other, to reply to the greeting. Don't think that, oh, you know, my sandals are five inches higher than hers. So when she says, Assalamu alaikum, I can just look at her and do, you know, push my head up. That's not how it works. No. You reply, no matter who you are, and Allah will bless you. He will give you contentment. So my brothers and sisters, you notice that the differences we have between us today for a common cause, we have set them aside. I'm sure in our midst, there are people from so many different walks of life. But we have come together to listen to a good word. Why can't we come together for the sake of Allah, for the pleasure of Allah? Why can't we respect each other? And I am saying once again, we are not calling on compromising your faith. No. We are not asking you to give up something to make people happy. No. You don't just shave off your beard. You don't just remove your hijab because you want to fit in. Because fitting in will never ever end. Today to fit in, you remove your beard. Tomorrow to fit in, you have to change your gender. The following day to fit in, you have to remove all your clothes. And after 10 years to fit in, you have to marry an animal. It's not going to stop. So you believe what you have to, let others do what they have to as well. Thank Allah that Allah has blessed you with respect, with honor, with dignity, with calmness. We don't drink, we don't intoxicate ourselves. We are not people who abuse anything. Subhanallah. We don't do that which is haram. We seek the forgiveness of Allah constantly where we have gone wrong because we want peace. That is how you achieve peace. And we continue encouraging each other to be able to achieve the peace. 
the differences we have in tribes, the differences we have in race, the differences we have as human beings, male and female, is not there to discriminate against one another. It's not there in order for one to think that I'm above you. No, it's there for recognition purposes so that you can recognize one another. I look at you immediately. I know who you are. Why? Allah made you different from me. That's why if we were all exactly the same, I always say we would need number plates on our foreheads. And I would call you 6533-8925. Please come forward. And then you would come because a big number. Why? Because there are many, many people. You would have a number, not a name. But we have names. And people recognize us. That's a gift of Allah. Tall and short and big and small and wide and narrow, etc. Whatever it might be. Allah knows. Learn to love people. Learn to respect them. Learn to honor them. Because the same Quran says to us, Remember the most honored, the most honored in the eyes of Allah from amongst you is he or she who is the closest to Allah in piety. If you're close to Allah, subhanallah, you are a better person in the eyes of Allah. You will find that out on the day of judgment. You might not know it right now. You won't know it right now. Because no one knows it. Anyone who thinks I'm pious, I'm a pious person. That's the beginning of the end of their piety. Because piety makes you humble. It makes you concerned. Look at Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, a great man. When the list of hypocrites was out to one companion, he asked him, am I on the list? Allahu Akbar, are you on the list? Such a high level of a person thinking he might, might have been filled with hypocrisy. No, he was not on the list. Great man. But with us, we are nowhere near Umar ibn al-Khattab. And we still think that everything is okay. I am pious. These people are not pious. I am going to heaven. They are going to hell. When people think others are going to hell, I always say, perhaps you are already there. That's why you can see who's there and who's not there. How can you tell who's going to hell? You there? It's like the uncle comes and says, you know what? I saw your son at the nightclub. You say, but uncle, what were you doing there? Now he's lost. The uncle comes and says, I saw your son at the nightclub. So you say, but uncle, what were you doing there? He scratches his head and he says, well, I went to check if your son was there or not. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. We don't need to think that way. We need to rectify ourselves. So my brothers and sisters, I hope we can make those few promises today. It is a very, very big day for us. Why is it a big day? Because whenever people gather in order to listen to a good word, in order to listen to the remembrance of Allah, to bring them closer to Allah, to learn something that is in revelation, they are encircled by the angels. And the mercy of Allah descends upon them. So if we have come in large numbers to listen to a good word, let's make sure that the word changes our hearts. Let it not be such that we heard something, we go back home and we say, wow, it was a good day. It was a memorable day. It was a historic day. But your life didn't change. Nothing changed. You didn't become a better person. You didn't change yourself. You didn't smile more. You didn't go home and solve your problems with your spouses, your children, your family members, your neighbors and the others. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, speaks about neighbors and fulfilling the rights of neighbors who are not Muslim. Respect them. Don't light a fire wherein the smoke of which shall go and harm them. Today we light a fire and we don't care. The whole community is cursing us. Because of the fire and the smoke and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him teaches us the one who is who harms his neighbor will not enter paradise. The one who harms his neighbor will not enter paradise. Have you heard that? Subhanallah. Amazing. Why harm your neighbor? It goes to show if you want a good life, you need to make sure those next to you are having a good life from you. 
then you have a good life and the next one will have a good one and the next one will have a good one and we will all live together but if you believe you need to hit him he believes he needs to hit you and everyone believes they need to be violent to one another and they need to bash each other then the world is going to be reduced to chaos and disorder that's not Islam Islam is the opposite Islam teaches you to respect people understand if Allah did not want them on earth they would not be on earth but Allah wanted them that's why Allah made them and at the beginning I told you that I would tell you about the dog remember we gave the example of the dog and I said it can be a swear word depending on how you say the term dog let me inform you of that dog there is a hadith of the Prophet peace be upon him that I love to repeat and you must have heard it but I'm going to say it again we ask Allah for barakah say Amin. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says on a hot day, there was a man who was very thirsty in the desert and he was looking for water and he found a well and there was no bucket. He decided to go down as a human being. He went down, he drank as much water as he wanted and he came up. As he emerged, there were no people around, but he noticed a dog. What did he notice? What did he notice? A dog. He told himself, you know what, this dog is as thirsty as I was before I drank water. Let me do something about it. Now you and I know, like I said earlier, as Muslims, when you talk of a dog, there are more rules and regulations governing your relationship with the dog. You need to make sure you understand, you need to make sure you know, you need to make sure, yes, you have to be kind to the dog, you have to be good to the dog, but you need to know your limits as well. If you saw a dog, on your way home, what would you do? Many of us would walk the other way, right? Many of us would walk the other way. This man saw a thirsty dog panting. And it's a hadith, correct narration of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He says, the man saw a dog panting in the heat. And he said to himself, لَقَدْ بَلَغَ هَذَا الْكَلْبِ مِنَ الْعَطَشِ مِثْلَ مَا كَانَ قَدْ بَلَغَ مِنِّي this dog is as thirsty as I was prior to me drinking the water. Let me go. He went back into the well and he knew there is no way of getting the water because there's no bucket. What did he do? He took out his shoe. He was not proud. He was not arrogant. He took out his shoe, a leather sock known in the Arabic language as Al-Khuf. فَمَلَأَ خُفَّهُ مَا أَن he filled his shoe with water. Allahu Akbar. Look at your shoes right now. Your Clarks, your Adidas, your Nikes, whatever else it might be. Are you prepared to take them out and fill them with water for a dog? Let me be honest. While I say that I will find it difficult with my own shoes, why should I ask you? Let me talk about myself. I will find it difficult with my own shoes. I think I will quickly run and get a cup or something else, inshallah. So don't ask me that question. <laughs> May Allah grant us goodness. But I just want to show you what this man did. He filled his own shoe, that which he was wearing. He removed it and he filled it with water. He came back up the well. He took the water, brought the dog near. Allahu Akbar. And he made this dog drink water. And Allah was watching him. And Allah says, we have forgiven this man. For him is paradise. Allahu Akbar. Because he has love and compassion for a creature that Allah created. That is a dog. And wallahi, this is a powerful narration. A man receives forgiveness. Because he quenched the thirst of a dog. My brothers, my sisters, what do you think is the value of the one who quenches the thirst of another human being? Forget about dogs. What do you think is the value of you reaching out to a person you differ with completely? A Satanist, whoever else it might be. 
reach out to these people with some goodness perhaps Allah will guide them and if Allah doesn't guide them it's between them and Allah look at the Prophet Moses may peace be upon him Allah sent him to a man who used to say Ana a'la. I am the God I am God that's what the Pharaoh used to say وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَاهٍ غَيْرِ The Pharaoh said, Oh my people, I don't know of a God besides me for you all to worship. That's the type of man he was. But when Allah sends Moses to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Musa alayhi salam and his brother Harun, Allah says to them, فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Go to him and speak in a soft way. Perhaps he might remember. Perhaps he might be more conscious of us. Or he might understand, he might fear, he might realize. So speak to him in a soft way. Allah is telling someone who is the highest of the time the prophet moses to go to the one who was the lowest of the time and that is the pharaoh he was a tyrant he was a killer a murderer he murdered so many he created disaster upon disaster if allah wanted allah could afflict him and done whatever he wanted but allah gave him a long time and allah did not tell moses go and kill him no allah said Go to him with beautiful words, loving, soft, kind words. You differ with this man so strongly. He's a mushrik of note, not just a mushrik. He has installed himself as a God besides Allah. But Allah didn't say go and kill him, go and harm him, go and swear him, go and call him bad names, go and say you are a kafir going to Jahannam. None of that was said to the Pharaoh. But we say it to people who are not as bad as the Pharaoh. And we are nowhere near the value of the Prophet Moses. Who are we and who are they? You see, we call ourselves Muslims. We speak in a more harsh tone to our brothers than the Prophet Musa was instructed to speak to the Pharaoh. Is your brother a little Pharaoh? Some of you might be nodding your heads. Yeah, he is. In our house, we call him Fir'aun. May Allah forgive us. <laughs> May Allah not let that happen. No matter what, let's be realistic. Let's go back to what we were saying. Take a look at this. One day when the punishment came, it came. When Allah wanted the death of the Pharaoh, he died. Why do we have to kill people? For what? Why do we have to harm them? You really want, you really want goodness for people? And you should be wanting goodness for people? Speak to them, convince them. And if you can't convince them, Complain to Allah about your weakness. That's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did. When he went to Ta'if, the people of Ta'if began to stone him. The children were laughing at him, chasing him, throwing stones at him. And you know what? The angels came to him, the angels of the mountains. They said, Oh Muhammad, if you want, we can crush these people right here and right now. You just instruct us. So he raises his hands. And the people must be thinking, subhanallah, I am thinking, you are thinking, what is the prayer this man is going to make? He was sent as a mercy and he was not sent as a means of destruction. So he raises his hands, he says, Allahumma, oh Allah. Imagine what the angels must be thinking. I'm just imagining in my own mind that the best of creation is calling out to Allah regarding people who have harmed him, throwing stones at him, made the blessed blood bleed. And he says, Allahumma, oh Allah. I'm sure they were waiting for one word, destroy them. And they would have been gone. But that's not what he said. He says, oh Allah. Allahumma inni ashku ilayka dhafa quwati wa killata hilati. Oh Allah, I'm complaining to you about my own weakness and my own inability. Oh Allah, guide these people. They don't know what they are doing. Allahu Akbar Kabira. That is the messenger of Rahmah, the messenger of mercy. Look at how he dealt with difference. He says to Allah, oh Allah, you guide them. I know guidance is in your hands. I tried. Look, I'm weak. Allahu Akbar, was he weak? He was not weak. But the lesson had to come to us to say, you will not 
be harmed in that way? Who threw stones at you? Who made you bleed? Show me, subhanallah. Who made you bleed? But in your own community, society, family, country, etc., etc., you start harming others and you claim you are the follower of Muhammad, peace be upon him. You are far from that. May Allah not do that to us. So that was the day of Ta'if when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, dealt with this beautiful difference in a way that he prayed for them and he continued praying for them. My brothers and sisters, I ask you with all my heart, how many of us have prayed for the enemies of Islam? Oh Allah, bring them to Islam. Those who have harmed Islam, how many of us have prayed for them when the Prophet Muhammad in Mecca was faced Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the people who harmed Islam, such as Umar ibn al-Khattab, such as Amr ibn Hisham, who was known as Abu Jahl, he raised his hands and he says, Allahumma a'izzal Islam bi ahad al umarain Oh Allah, grant strength to Islam by the acceptance of Islam by one of the two Umars, either Abu Jahl or Umar ibn Khattab. He made a dua to Allah. You know who was Abu Jahl? He was one of the enemies of Islam. Here is the messenger asking Allah, Oh Allah, guide him. Oh Allah, guide him or guide Umar ibn al-Khattab. No sooner did he make the dua, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu decides, I want to go out and get rid of this prophet. Who is he? So he comes out of his house. He was diverted by someone to his own sister's house. And thereafter, he read a few verses of the Quran. You see, many people hate Islam due to their ignorance about Islam. But if they were to read the Quran, if they were to check what Islam is all about, they will understand its value. And they will turn to it. It's the word of Allah. Compare the Quran with any other book. You will see it is the book from Allah. We believe. Even the disbelievers, a lot of them acknowledge that indeed this word is not from man. From the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they used to say that. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he read a few verses of Surah Taha and immediately his heart was softened. What was that? That was the dua, the supplication of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for him. That's what it was. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said loud and clear, O oh Allah, guide strength to Islam by the acceptance of Islam of the, one of these enemies here. So one of the enemies, their hearts were softened to Islam. How many of us have made dua for people who have caused lots of harm to the Muslims internationally? Have you ever prayed a good prayer for them? Subhanallah. The problem with us, when we differ with someone, you know what? Even if you differ with your own mother-in-law, you have daughters-in-law asking a question, can I pray to Allah to destroy my mother-in-law? And the same mother-in-law is asking, can I pray to Allah to destroy my daughter-in-law? Allahu Akbar. So imagine if she prayed against this one, this one prayed against that one, this one prayed. We all pray against each other. Oh Allah, destroy, 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 destroy. What are we seeing on the globe today? Destruction. Because that's what we are doing ourselves with our own hands. Destruction, destruction, destruction. We cannot tolerate a person we differ with. That's where we are failing. If you want growth of your own nation here today, which is probably one of the richest countries in terms of resources, you need peace, you need stability, you need security. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. So I call on you never to compromise the security Allah has blessed you with in this nation of yours. Never, no matter what, don't harm each other, abuse each other, hurt each other, learn to respect each other. You are part of a few families. Don't create disaster. We are no longer jahiliya. You know what is jahiliya? The ignorance when one wants to marry from the north, the people from the south say, no, 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 no. They are from the north. I'm sorry, you are never going to marry. Forget about that. That's not Islam. Islam says you will give your daughter. You will get married. No problem. For as long as they have two qualities, it's enough. No matter where they are from. Islam teaches you. If someone comes to propose for your daughter and they have good character and a decent level of religion and piety, let it happen. Because if you don't, there will be chaos on earth. Those are the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But who are we? 
We say, no, I know better than the Prophet. My daughter is not going there. Audhu Billah. My daughter is not going there. Why? They are from the north. Are you crazy? You think I'm going to give them? They are from the north. What north? Are they from the North Pole? Subhanallah. Even if they were from the North Pole or South Pole, it should happen. May Allah bless you. May Allah grant us ease. So the religion is not from my pocket or yours, but we need to understand it. We need to put it into context. We need to practice it correctly. And that's when we will be able to respect differences amongst us in a way that we please Allah. We understand the right that I believe I have. Everyone else has exactly the same right. I have the right to fulfill Salah. I'm living in a secular country, secular state. Someone else might not read Salah. What do I do? I need to talk to them. I need to convince them. I need to sell the product to them. I need to try and bring them. And when they do come, I will smile at them. I remember one of the masajid, there was a young boy who came to the masjid in shorts. You know, a short, that which they used to play football. He came for Salah and people started swearing him and shouting. And I said, no, 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 no. He has come to the house of Allah, not to your house. He has come to the house of Allah, not to your house. You don't talk to him like that. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, look at how he dealt with a man who walked in and urinated in the masjid. What did the Arabi do, the Bedouin man? He went into the masjid, he urinated inside the masjid. If that were to happen today, what would we do? Speak to me, what would we do? Allahu Akbar. A man came and urinated in the masjid. The companions wanted to shout and scold, etc. The Prophet says, Stop! Let him finish his business. What? What? Let him finish his business. We have only sent you. As a means of mercy, oh Muhammad, peace be upon him. Here is the prophet of mercy saying, he's urinating. Don't stop him. Let him finish. Why? Imagine while you are urinating, halfway someone says, stop. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Please don't go home and try that. It, you will suffer disease, sickness. It's impossible. Here is the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, let him finish. Because as it is, he started. Now that he started, we are going to have to clean this anyway. <laughs> so let him finish. When he finished, the Prophet, peace be upon him, told the companions, go and get a bucket of water. And then he called him. He said, hey, this is the house of Allah. In here, we remember Allah. We pray the Quran. We read Salah. We do good things. But we don't urinate in here. So the man was so happy that someone spoke to him with respect. Who was speaking to him with respect? The greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets, speaking to a man, a Bedouin, unknown man who came in and just urinated and the prophet speaks to him with respect. May Allah forgive me. I am also so weak. Sometimes we disrespect people without intention, unintentionally. So my brothers and sisters, this man was so happy. Do you know what he said? He said, Allahumma arhamni warham Muhammadan wa la tarham ma'ana ahadan. Oh Allah, have mercy on me, have mercy on Muhammad, and don't have mercy on all the others, no one else. Why? They were all shouting at me just now. They wanted me to stop. You are the only one who spoke nice. So I'm saying, oh Allah, have mercy on me and, and this man, but not the others. So now the Prophet, peace be upon him, needs to correct him for the second time. You know what he said? Look at how he's dealing with this. It's a difference, isn't it? He taught him. He says, you are trying to make narrow something that is very, very broad. What is it? The mercy of Allah. You want the mercy of Allah to be for two people, but Allah's mercy is so broad. It has to be for more than that. So then he was smiling. Subhanallah. Look at how the messenger, peace be upon him, corrected. My brothers and sisters, I love the Gambia so much that I've lost track of time. I don't even know how long I've been speaking for. And I've been told it's time now, mashallah. You allow me to continue? Yeah. Mashallah. 
You heard what happened, Sheikh. So we can end at about 10 p.m. tonight, inshallah. We will break for salah and we'll come back. Is that a good idea? Oh, mashallah, mashallah. But I want to tell you, you know, cough mixture. When you have a cough, you cannot have the whole bottle one time. You need five mils or ten mils. Then the next day you can have another five mils or ten mils. So for us, if we have a spiritual cough, uh, five mils are already. In fact, we've had 15 mils, I think. It's a bit much, you know. So, inshallah, we can have the rest on another occasion. But we still have the rest of the program. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all love. May Allah accept us. May Allah grant you barakah. May Allah give you rahmah. May Allah have mercy on you. May Allah open your doors. May Allah give you contentment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you every form of happiness. May Allah help us to live with one another. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa sallam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Amal Foundation, Supreme Islamic Council, International Open University, Freedom uh, Properties, DBC Printing, Paradise.
Yes, iAfrica TV. Okay, this is iAfrica TV, and if you are listening, following pictures, you will um, be remind you should be reminded that iAfrica TV is one of the institutions, media organization associated to the pro uh, the facilitation of Mufti's lecture in the Gambia. Uh, it has just um, taken place at the Bako International Stadium, and now the Sheikh is going back to his residence in the Gambia. And then you could see the now the security have um, also continued their work, are continuing their work, and Gambians and everyone in the stadium, to the stadium which was full to capacity, each and every individual was willing to um, allow the Sheikh to speak. He has spoken in his lecture for one hour, about one hour, 30 minutes, after which people were still demanding for more information from the Sheikh. Uh, this is a demonstration of the people's uh, love and, I mean, long-awaited and anticipated uh, program for this Sheikh in this country. Uh, now that uh, he has um, closed his speech, if you look around the stadium, um, people are now finding, have to find their ways. If you know the location of back of a little bit of um, the center of Serekunda, uh, it will have to be a, another struggle for everyone to go back. Yeah, and then with the fact that uh, Gambians from all corners of the country travel to, for this event alone. There are people all the way from Basse, people all the way from Mansa, Congo, Makati, people all the way from Bansang, and, and I mean, all corners of the country. Fear over electoral rigging rocks Zimbabwe as the country is Today, after listening to Prime Minister May's assessment of the state of the negotiations,